Hi everyone, happy Saturday. Um, so obviously I did not post this yesterday. If you saw my community post or my uh, Instagram post, you know why. Um, I'll talk a little bit to it this morning. Um, probably mention it in my color and chat too, just in case those people didn't watch the flip throughs. Um, but if you wanna go ahead and get started with the flip throughs, I'll have the timestamps in the description and we'll start off with this one, um, which was a request. My flip throughs are gonna probably be a little different this week. I might have some commentary. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the books, of course, at the beginning, just giving you a breakdown of them, but um, I will probably be a little quieter as I'm flipping through the books, um, just for obvious reasons. Um, so this, <laughs> um, so sorry about that, but hopefully I will feel more like chatting in the uh, final part of the flip through, which will hopefully be on Friday. So there's that. Um, just quickly, Sidonia is giving me trouble in terms of wanting to eat again. She's not super, um, her appetite went back down. We tried another short acting steroid shot, but more than likely I suspect we're gonna have to do the exploratory surgery with her. Um, it could be a lot of things, but they're not gonna know till they get in there. Um, she did eat some this morning and she's hanging out with me, so there's that. Um, Magellan or Maggie, he also stopped eating this week and started acting nauseous and stuff again. So we put him back on the gabapentin. He's got another week of antibiotics. And then next Friday, we're going to run some blood work and see how his kidney numbers are doing since he's had that kidney infection. And when I took him yesterday, he had lost weight again still. So um, Oreo is in late to end stage chronic kidney disease. Um, the biggest thing right now is just trying to keep him comfortable and making sure that he does eat. Um, it, as long as it's not high protein or high phosphorus, he can pretty much eat it at this point. Um, phosphorus is building up in his system because his kidneys aren't working so well, so I'm going to have to get some phosphorus binding powder to give him between meals. Um, we, there's some other things we can try but he is now anemic along with his kidney values being off. So um, I don't know. I don't know how long I have with him. If he doesn't deteriorate or if he stays pretty much status quo, then they want to see him in six months. So, I mean, I guess that's a little positive that it's not every couple months he needs to go in. So um, anyway, that's about as much as I can say about it today. I am probably going to be doing a lot of gaming this weekend just to distract myself. I love to color, but coloring doesn't fully grab my focus and distract me like I kind of need right now. So um, I'm going to try to do, even if it's just music, um, a color and chat at some point, either Sunday or Monday or Wednesday. Um, it'll probably be like a color by number or something simple. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to do next Friday's flip through Friday and um, yeah we'll just go from there but yeah things aren't going real well here I <laughs> I've had chronically ill cats before obviously but to have three that are struggling and two of them we really don't know what's going on a hundred percent is is very difficult and I just I need them all to eat I need them all to feel better um, meal times are so stressful for me right now because it's just will they or won't they eat and anyway all right so I've babbled enough about that let's go ahead and get started and probably since I'm not talking these will go faster than normal <laughs> oh there's so look for the positive right um this was by request last week from Isabel's life in the comments and um, no I don't you know go and purchase books on request but this one when I went to look at because she asked me if I had it and had I had never heard of it before 
it was sufficiently cat enough and weird enough that I felt like it belonged in my collection. So, um, this is Cat Life Coloring Book. Um, it's Kenneth Hutchison, though it says illustrations by Hutch on the inside. So, this is Amazon printed. It is a little smaller than a typical eight and a half by eleven book. It is shorter and then not quite as wide. So keep that in mind. Um, Amazon printed, one-sided pages. Sorry, just grabbing some coffee. Um, like I said, this this poor cat looked like looks like it's been hit by the ugly stick. Bless his heart. So I think in the puns and everything in this book were just sufficiently funny and weird enough that, like I said, it, it belonged in my collection. I think this picture's adorable. But like I said, I, I don't think he'll win any beauty contests, but, um, bless his heart, he tries. He's still adorable. For me, cats are adorable no matter how how unfortunate their genetics were, I guess. That's pretty much how I feel after consuming multiple uh, Krispy Kreme donuts. Can't have just one. I'm sure he's screaming some unfortunate things about somebody's mom while he's playing while he's playing some multiplayer game. They do have a frame around pretty dark line art. That is a suspicious look. Mermaid for this. I like I like the puns in here. I love that his back legs seem to have no, um, no particular state. They're just everywhere in these pictures. Ninja Kitty. Fairly simple pictures. They've got a little bit of detail drawn into them, so these would be pretty quick to color in if if you didn't want to do a lot of a lot of work on them. I think you'll be seeing more Lucky Cat later in this, uh, later in this batch of books. I don't think I mentioned it earlier. I should have before I started the books, but I think most of you that have stuck around here know um, I'm doing all these cat related books because of Cattober Coloring 2020 which is being hosted by myself and John a bibliophile colorist here on YouTube my cat themed coloring book stack is definitely my biggest stack of the bunch so we had to um, split it <laughs> I had to split it into parts so thank you Isabel, Isabel I'm assuming, uh, Isabel's Life for suggesting this book. Um, I definitely didn't need any more coloring books in my life, but I just couldn't resist that one. All right, I think the rest of these this week are all, go ex with the exception of this one, are all going to be um, Dover printed books. So this is um, Marty Noble, and I tossed this one in here this week because I have a Creative Haven Marty Noble book too, and so I wanted to, why, can't, that's a pretty big book. 
Um, I wanted to include this one with that one. This looks like this is printed by Racehorse Publishing, which is the same publisher that does did Marjorie Sarnett's Pampered Pets, the one the book I flipped through last month. So this is not a Dover book. This is printed by a separate company. Um, I think it is a little taller. No, it's about the same size. It's eight and a half by eleven. Am I talking too much for you? Sidonia's in here with me. I, I've had a little more luck getting her to eat some more if I come in here in the room with her. Of course, she's got to be on a separate, um, she's supposed to be on a separate GI diet, and so I'm trying to feed her separate from the other cats, and that's not going well. She liked the food for like the first two days, and then now she's acting like she doesn't like it anymore. Um, anyway, so Marty Noble, Cats Around the World. Again, not a Creative Haven or Dover book. This is printed by Racehorse Publishing. Again, the same publishers that did um, Marjorie Sarnett's Pampered Pets, so it's probably very similar paper. There are 48 images in this book. It is US $9.99 um, was the, or is the original price, so it is a little more expensive too than the Creative Haven books, but you do get more pictures. So. so this book, um, oh, and it's perforated pages. I had somebody ask me that about Pampered Pets. And I uh, went and looked, because I couldn't remember, and sure enough, the perforated, more ivory colored than white pages. So, each page has a cat in a different setting around the world, and then if you want to know where exactly they're at, it is on the back of the page, where it also shows which image that is. So, for example, that's Puerto Rico. These do have frames around them. I'd say medium type um, heaviness on the line art, not super dark. Now, I think I had a similar named book by Eva Carrere last week. Um, her book was more like cats as people interacting with their environment kind of book. This one seems to be um, cats like posing with like sitting in the windows looking out at this beautiful scenery. So. little different type of format but nonetheless still very pretty. I like the f more freeform frame around this one a lot. I think Marty Noble tries to include some detail work to um, in his pictures with some areas that maybe aren't so detailed to kind of get a little more balance to them. I really like this one. And on some of them, you get like little decorative frames as well. So, I thought this one was pretty. And that one's pretty too. I've not colored a lot of like cityscapes or different areas like this. Um, so this would be a good one for me to try. The paper is really smooth. I felt like my markers were a little streaky on it. Um, last month I colored a page, it was like a piggy bank pig page out of Pampered Pets. Um, and I felt like the markers were a little streaky. I do not know how pencil does in here though. 
Funny enough, um, the paper that's super smooth, I tend to have more problems with my markers being a little streaky. Um, I have to, like on my Amazon books, you can just pretty much put marker to paper and they're super thirsty and they soak up. Love this one, especially if you did it in different blocks of like reds and yellows. Um, it soaks very thirsty paper. It soaks up the color very quickly. Um, so I don't have I don't have as much issue with streaking on that type of paper but smoother paper because it doesn't this type of paper doesn't absorb the ink as much um, which is great for the life of your markers you just have to be a little more careful because it will it will streak a bit more so is my guess as to what's happening there my non-scientific guess. That lace pattern there is really pretty on that. I think this would be a good book if you want to try, um, if you're really looking to try fur, coloring fur on cats, um, coloring like different patterns and stuff. There are a lot of cats in here that um, don't have a lot of detail to them. Like they have a little bit, but not a lot. So this might be a good one to, um, for example, you know, try to build a fur pattern on pattern on using um, like fine liners or colored pencils or what, what have you. So. I think my husband's up. I tried to close the door and let him sleep in this morning. I was hoping I could convince Sid to jump back down and eat some more food, but she doesn't look like she is having it. She is just chilling with me this morning. <sighs> Goodness. I like the design of this one a lot. I love the expressions on their faces too. Very smug looks on those. me Annie with those really big paws that's pretty what she looked like was an overgrown kitten I think this one would be fun to do um, especially if you did it with like fall colors or something all through here would be pretty. Or at least a lot of different types of green. <laughs> As you can see, there's a good mix of landscape and portrait style pictures. Though I think I'm with everybody else when we all say it would be a lot easier when you're doing flip throughs to have like all the landscape pictures together and all the portraits so you don't have to constantly do the flipping like I'm doing here. It's like, it's a, it would be a nice feature. It doesn't necessarily a have to, I guess, but so here's where you could test, uh, palettes and meat coloring mediums um, which is a nice touch but it is double-sided so if you're trying to 
test markers, you um, might only have a few pages as opposed to four or five. So there's cats around the world. All right. So I think I'm caught up on the cats. I added a cat sticker this morning, so I think there's 24 on there. Um, all right. So, oh, there you go. Now you can see them all. My, normally I would have swapped to a different page by now. My paper's getting a little beat up on my, it's a pad of paper so I can take off the different sheets. Um, and yeah, normally by now I would have, this one would have, I would have done a fresh sheet, but I want to keep doing my cat stickers. So, all right. So now we are going to start, um, with the two Creative Haven books in this collection. The rest of these, I believe, are Dover Publications, but um, there are different types of Dover Publications. So there is uh, like the Creative Haven series, Dover Coloring Book series, there's the Dover Spark series. So I, I think I've got one, a couple from each of those for today. The Creative Haven series is probably the one everybody's most familiar with. This is probably their adult coloring book series. They are all typically the same, eight and a half by 11, 31 images, one-sided, Dover printed uh, paper, the perforated. I'd say the paper's probably medium quality. It's, um, it's pretty much handled everything I, I put towards it, so <laughs> at least so far. This one, um, and they, th you can purchase the Creative Haven books on Amazon. You can also create, purchase them on Dover Publishing. I'll have links on, for both, um, for each of the Dover books. And um, I recommend checking both if you're interested in a particular book because sometimes they have sales on the Dover site, sometimes they have sales on Amazon, so. All right, this is The Cat's Coloring Book by Marty Noble, The Creative Haven book. This is what the back looks like. Like I said, typically there are 31 images, but there are exceptions and you'll see that in the next book, depending on the type of book it is. The Creative Haven books also have um, colored versions of the images on like the front and back cover like this, which I think is cool when I'm struggling to pick a color scheme. There's the title page. They also usually have like a little paragraph blurb, which I suspect may be the same blurb they use on like Amazon and stuff. So, but if you want to pause and read that, feel free. And then we'll get started. Again, I think most of his pages have frames on them. Very uh, similar in style to the Cats Around the World book, though. Um, a few of these I really like because I tend to prefer the ones where cats are actually interacting with their, uh, with the background. Like here the cat is really, really kind of contemplating. You can see like the calculations in his head regarding that bird. Should I grab the bird? Is it worth it? What's going to happen to me? <laughs> and so on. Even if they're just sleeping on a bed or something. I think I like that type of cat picture more than I do where they're just posing with things. But that's me personally. I still like these pictures a lot. Like I said, I think these would be great. Um, like him and the teacups are really cool. I think these would be great to practice uh, fur on. Some of the cat books can have like patterns already shaded in, which is great for me because I'm, you know, lazy. Um, they could have patterns or fur already shaded in, but if you need just, um, if you need kind of a blank canvas to practice that kind of stuff on. Some of these look like they have like a little frame around them like this one. It's cute. And that one's pretty. Though I, I, th I would think I would have liked this one better if they'd done away with the um, rectangular frame and the lines and then just had the flowers and stuff circling them. I think just more of a freeform style, I think would have 
made that picture a little better. But again, Marty Noble's really good about balancing out images, um, leaving a lot of white space in the picture, but then creating some pattern and some intricate details to just kind of balance out the pictures, which I I love. And then with this one, you get more of just natural settings than like um, the different places around the world. So if you like the style of Marty Noble's cats, but you weren't too big on the um, cityscapes and the landscapes and everything, and you just want, you know, that style against more more patterns, scenery, um, places I guess cats hang out, then I would suggest getting this one. If you like them with the different landscapes, um, then I would go with the cats around the world, like if you had to pick one. So, if that makes any sense. I'm not making a lot of sense today, guys. <laughs> I really like how the expressions are drawn on the face of the cats. They're, they're all different expressions and I think Marty Noble does definitely draws cats and, and varies the expression on them really well. I mean, cats are jerks, but they're adorable jerks too, so. Like, if that was actually Reap Cheap, I could see him playing with those flowers or vines rather than just posing with them, but some people, like, like, I really like this one now. This, this is great because you've got, like, it looks like he's trying to have a little picnic here, but then you've got that um, countryside kind of background and with the grapes and stuff. It's really pretty. My camera's wonky. I think this one's from the front page. Yep. It's just, obviously, you get more of the image. It makes me think of the Siamese and a Disney movie. Why can't I think of it? The We Are Siamese, if you please, ones. I can't think of it. <laughs> And I do not have the energy to pause the video and go looking, so some of you will know. Alright, so there is the other Marty Noble book I have. Now, this is, this is a Creative Haven book. Um, it is a little different because it is a color by number. This is Cats Color by Number by George Tufexis. Again, a Creative Haven book. The layout of the book and the format, the type of paper and everything is very similar. The one exception to the color by number books for Creative Haven is instead of 31 images, they provide 46. And the typical U.S. retail price for the color by numbers is $9.99 as opposed to U.S. as opposed to $5.99 um, for the regular Creative Haven books, like the Cats one I just showed you. So you do get more, way more images, um, but they're also um, a little more expensive. However, I, as I always say, with the color by number books, definitely keep an eye out for those. Um, if Dover does a sale or they do a sale on Amazon, um, a lot of times they will mark their color by number books down depending on their sale and you could snag them for 
it's rare that I've had to pay $9.99 for a color by number book, but I love George Tufexis, so like if he's he's done a new release this year, I would probably go ahead and pay the $9.99 for his books. But if you are patient and you're not, I'm not saying do as I say, say or do as I say, do as I do, not as I do here, um, but I'm just suggesting that. So anyway, so he has a cat's color by number book. The color by number Creative Haven books do have the legend on the inside. It's not the same color legend across the books. Um, even across George Tufex's books, the colors will vary. Um, it does get to be a bit of a pain having to flip back and forth. I wish they had like a little fold out or something that had the legend on it um, so you could easily access it. You do get thumbnails of all the completed pictures on the inside covers just so you have them for reference. That's what the back ones look like. One tip for the Color by Number Creative Haven books, um, which I guess this could be for any Color by Number book. If I get a marker set that I feel like closely matches the color legend, I will go ahead and list them out on a separate piece of paper. I'll swatch them. That way, um, when I'm working in this book now, I'll have this page next to my book. I don't have to flip back and forth. So, just quick tip there. If that is a bit of a pain. So these have a little more text and a little more information to them in the front here. A copy right here. This is 2017. I think this is one of his older ones because usually he explains he explains the whole shade thing that's zero. Basically that's a darker version of the color next to it or a black or a gray basically you're just indicating a shadow if there's a zero there if there's nothing there then you leave it white he explains it a little more i think in the newer books but it's not as well explained in this one so i have completed a couple pages out of this each page comes with let me see it's probably just going to be easier for everybody if i hold it up it does list there the uh, type of cat in the picture in the binding um, separate like you could tear out the page and it won't have that on there so I can't remember what I used here the pink and purple in his ears are a little wild but other than that I think it turned out good and then this one I believe is the American Curl that was the Abyssian this is the American Curl so now, I did have some bleed to the next page happen. I don't know if that, that typically does not happen in my Creative Haven books. I don't know if that was a situation where I didn't let it dry enough before I closed the book or what, but I did have a little bit of bleed through happen here, but I, I don't know what these colors are. What is 22? 22 is golden brown, no. 22 is light purple. I don't think it's going to show very much on that one. This may be the one I do for the color and chat. So, or color and music or whatever I'm going to call it. Just as a heads up. Because I want to do more in this book. Now, if you are familiar with George Tufexis's, Tufexis's books. I love this picture. I don't know. This might be the one I do next kind of want to do them in order but there are also pictures in here I like a lot better than the others. If you are familiar with George Tufex's books um, his color by number is a little more complex than most are. Um, as you can see there's a lot of tiny little detail areas. Hang on just a minute. Is she going to do it? Am I going to have to pause? Eh, she might eat a little. Sid jumped down and acted like she wanted to eat. So I was trying to give her some food. I should have paused it. Sorry. Um, you could tell like what my anxiety level is like. Anyway, George Tufex is typically has really complex um, color by number. Like if you've seen his, his glorious gardens, his Christmas color by number. 
this little detail work here is like across the board especially with his landscapes this book's a little different um there is more detail than most but i find that this book isn't quite as detailed there's not quite as many tiny tiny bits to fill in so yeah she ate like two bites and went on you little snot anyway I'll deal with it in a minute <laughs> this is this is my life right now um so if you do like George Tufex's art but you want you you wish he had something that wasn't quite as detailed complex this might be the book for you obviously if you're a fan of cats would probably be another criteria there um so yeah i kind of wish like don't get me wrong the details like i grumble about them while i'm doing them when i'm done i'm like oh these look amazing um i like them but i also kind of wish he had some books like this that aren't quite as detailed plus i think the numbers are a little bigger here and the gray is a little darker so it's a little easier to read i feel like i might be crazy but I think that's the case now in his most recent book i did notice that a couple of his pages including the one i did at the start of the month um aren't as detailed as some of his more recent stuff has been so i think i think he's starting to mi hopefully mix it up a little bit in his books which i think is nice but i feel like the numbers are really tiny <laughs> in the new books so His books are really hard for me to color in in a regular sitting in the living room like light above my head setting for me. My eyesight is not the best and it unless I have the magnifying glass it is really hard for me to see in these types of books which I try to fix that. I, I noticed I had a plan in one of my pictures that you'll see in a minute that I don't think worked out so well. <laughs> I thought I would prep the picture in here and then I could color it in the living room easily. And I don't think that that test is gonna work out real well. Now these are definitely more cats interacting with their environments or cats just laying around on stuff, which I guess is a, is a cat interacting with his environment. I don't feel like I'm going super slow today, but I guess a lot of these, a um, couple of these books here have had a lot of pictures in them. So maybe that's why I've only went through a few books and we're this far in. The other books, um, I think will go relatively quickly. Like his little foot sticking out there. That one's really pretty. I think that's the Savannah. That's what I was saying. I kind of want to go in order, but I kind of... There's pictures in here I like more than others, so... I don't know. It's tough. And like I said, these aren't ones that I can typically just... That bottle brush tail on that cat. It's a Siberian. These aren't ones that I can really just take into his books are not ones I can take in the living room and just color away freely because it's just hard to see the numbers and the little areas and stuff to color. I have to be careful. So, Though this book, I would probably have better luck than others. Actually, I think, did I color the first one in there some? I might have. And that's the one from the front page with the rose. This was the one. I thought, okay, I'll just find all the areas that are one, which is black, and I'll just dot them in. So then when I'm sitting in the, in the on the couch, I can just see that they are um, black and color them as such. So 
I don't think that's going to work as well as I thought it would, but you know, I was trying to find a way around it. So there is very pretty kitties. Yeah, when I, this is a Turkish fan. I guess when I say interacting with their environment, like I said, cats tend to either be playing or sleeping. So there is that one. All right, so now we are going to look at the Dover Spark series, which is probably their mid-range coloring book series. Um, she did come back in a little bit. Look at her. What a good girl. Yes, what a good girl. She's just looking at me like, screw you. I don't like this food. Um, eating it reluctantly. Mm, come here. I wish she'd come over here. And She's usually always wanting a cameo, but not today. All right, so this is kind of their middle um, book series where I'd say, you know, uh, young adults, uh, don't want to say the word that might flag this video, but um, these are more whimsical type books, I feel like, um, which I love. I don't need, I don't necessarily need cats always in, you know, realistic settings. So these are a little more uh, whimsical type books. They're Dover Spark books. The cool thing about them is um, they are also one-sided. I feel like the paper is very similar to their Creative Haven series. Um, so I really like the Dover Spark books a lot. These have 30 images. This one is Curious Cats by Susan Hall. And my guess is it's basically, yeah, it'd probably be what cats dream about, which is floating around in space and playing various things and getting into trouble so it's title page a little bit of the intro if you want to pause and then we get into the book I don't know if the paper is exactly the same but it feels similar these are also perforated pages again a little more um, a little more whimsical type books cutesier books, I would say. <laughs> I think she wants to eat, but she doesn't really want to eat what I'm giving her. So, like, she will go away for a while, and she'll come back and eat a little bit, and then she'll go away and come back. <laughs> Which is fine. The biggest problem is just trying to keep the rest of them out of it. The biggest lesson I have learned this week with my cats is the best food to them is the food that they're not supposed to have. So if I offer it to them freely, they won't eat it. But if I try to keep it out of their reach or give it to another cat and not them, then all of a sudden that's all they want. Yeah, she keeps coming in here eating a couple bites. Like she goes off and grumbles and then comes back and grumbles and <sighs> But the thing is, I mean she she really needs to stay on the GI friendly diet cuz we were just really hoping that maybe if it helped ease her stomach nausea and troubles that um that would take care of everything. You know, maybe it's just she's got like an allergy or irritation with the regular food now, um, which happens. And um, she was all about that new food when I first introduced it to her. And um, now she's just very reluctant. Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. Yes, I'm talking about you. Let me pause this for a minute. Okay. Well, she needed, she went caught up here and wanted some pets, so. <laughs> anyway, these are super fun. You know, just, if you like to cut, use different colors and 
try different things, I think these books are really good ones for that. Sometimes I'm in the mood to color a cat, like, you know, laying on some steps like he's like you would typically expect. Sometimes I want to color cats crazy colors and these all would have been really good for the cat, the galaxy cat prompts. I didn't even realize a lot of these involved um, space if you wanted them to. I mean, you could obviously color the background any color you want. Yin Yang cats, that looks like fun. These are not super detailed either. These are, um, I wouldn't say super simple, but just enough detail, I think, like if you like to add gel pen detail or paint or glitter markers, I think these would be great books for that, like paint markers and stuff like that. That is a good sign seeing her go back. That's so cute. Her about to play with his toes. I really like the first and the last picture in here. There's a draw your own. I really like that one in that very first picture. I like the freeform kitties, but I also really like how she's drawing the kitty that's dreaming. I think is just super adorable with those little stripes. So. And there is the back of the book. So there is Curious Cats. Hey, we're making it about as far as I got yesterday before I abandoned this. I probably could have just used that footage, but nah. Anyway, this is Cool Cats by Noelle Palin. No, Daylin, excuse me, D-A-H-L-E-N. And I'm still probably not pronouncing that right, but. 30 cool cats to color. These are also show retail of $5.99 US um, on these books as well. That's why I think they're probably very similar in page quality. They're just marketed a little different. One of the things I have found well, I say that this paper looks a little thinner. It, You know, I take that back. This paper might be a little different because I think it is a little bit thinner than the other one. I don't know. If you have Dover Spark and Creative Haven books and you've colored in both, um, leave a comment. Let me know how you feel about it because I don't think I've colored enough in Dover Spark to really be able to say this paper acts the same way. So, again, more of just kind of a free form, whimsical kind of cat book. One tip that I learned, thanks to some awesome commenters, is that they do um, in their, some of their other series that they publish, I really like this one, and some of their other series that they publish, the pages are double sided. And they do have some really cute um, books like this um, that I would purchase for a couple dollars on sale and they would be double sided. And I'm like, I can't use my markers in this unless I want to ruin the picture or just scan a page or whatever. But I learned that for quite a few of those books, they are um, also available as Dover Spark books. So you could get them just one sided as well. Not all of them, but at least some of them were. So um, if you do find one of their double-sided books and it's got really cute pictures in it, um, there's one more series they have. I don't know if I have those in here. Maybe it is the Dover Coloring Book series. Definitely look at their Dover Sparks to see its books to see if they have the same book in Dover Spark format. I wonder what, like, when they look at a book, I wonder what constitutes, you know, this is going to be a Dover coloring book, and I get the Dover Spark one, but when we get to some of the Dover and the Creative Haven differences, but when we get to the Dover coloring books, like, some of them, I could see them as Creative Haven books, and like I said, I wonder what, 
I wonder how they determine those. This is really dark line art as well. Oh, those little jingly balls. When my cats would actually play with them. And then you'd end up stepping on them in the middle of the night. So we had some storms yesterday and we had a big temperature drop between yesterday and today. And it's really funny because normally the cats mill out around on the porch for a while. This one looks like it almost has some shading in some of these. I don't know if that's an issue with the printer or if it's actually supposed to be that way, but it's super cool. Well, there's a cute pumpkin on. Hmm. See, like some of these, the eyes are shaded differently. I'm going to assume that's on purpose because it's just the eyes. The rest of the line art looks fine, so. Which is cool. I think a lot of us that are Creative Haven or Dover fans have wanted them to put out, like, I think grayscale images would be awesome, which they did recently with, I think it's called Rose Windows or something. Um, they did put out like a grayscale book recently and a lot of people have that one and it's really pretty. I like it. It's just, again, the whole trying to be trying to do the mindful buying thing which obviously is going swimmingly for me all right so i think the rest of these are dover coloring books the big difference when i say dover coloring books i mean yeah they're published by dover but um they actually are part of a series this is dover coloring books so some differences with these is um on the dover spark and creative haven you do have like the title on the binding, the uh, uh, artist and everything. Um, on the Dover coloring books, they have more, I guess, instead of a glued binding, they have a stapled binding. Um, they are double-sided. So keep that in mind as well. I do believe they do, they have, we'll find out in a minute. Here's Karen Baldowski, the cat coloring book. I think this says 40 images in this one these are a little cheaper retail in the u.s 4.99 um, these do frequently go on sale for like a couple dollars each it looks like they do have the like title and stuff on the binding but because it's stapled it's showing up on the back instead of like a actual binding if that makes any sense I do like a lot of the Dover coloring books like this because they are, um, they're very informational. I feel like they're good learning books. Like if I want to learn more about cat breeds, like this is going to be a really good book for that. It does show some examples in here on the cover. Big introduction. I am obviously not going to read this, but it just talks a lot about cats and historical context, what the, you know, some, some interesting facts about cats, like, although they are nocturnal, cats cannot see in total darkness. They have a special layer of cells in, on their retinas that reflect a great deal of light. So they have extraordinary eyesight and very dim light, but they can't really see in total darkness. Um, this one says cats often live to be 14 or 15 years old. So I guess my cats are, are doing pretty good there. Because Oreo's at least 16. So anyway. So these will have a picture of the cat with some scenery. And then it actually has a little blurb where like captions where they talk about either the specific breed or in this case... The first English settlers in America brought cats with them on their transatlantic voyages. The American shorthair is the breed that originated from the British short, domestic shorthair variety that was brought over. And then you get into these. And they're beautifully drawn pictures. 
Um, like I said, they talk a little bit about each of the breeds down here. Again, one of the problems with this book is it's double-sided and it just breaks my heart. The really cool, like, I guess I'm a, a information nerd. These, like, informational ones they have, I really wish they would do, um, I don't necessarily think probably they'd fit in with Dover Spark, but man, I really wish they'd do these, like, with Creative Haven, or at least one-sided. Again, I think these would be great ones to play with, um, like fur patterns, but I would stick with colored pencils on these. I have pretty heavy pressure. Oh, that little bobtail so cute. I'm pretty heavy pressure when I color. So I don't know how, that would probably not work well in this book. And I would need to, I love that wink, sassy cat ragdoll my parents cat is a rag uh part ragdoll mira no she's either full ragdoll she might be full i don't know anyway she is pretty sassy and i feel like that's a very fitting picture but um some of these are just the cats some of these are scenes with the cats I think some of these would be fun as like um, watercolors and some of them just have a label like kittens or something they don't have a full caption so but like I said I'm an information nerd I love learning even especially about my favorite subject in the world And what's cool is when they list these you can also go and like google and see what they look like this is more of a if you want you don't have to but this is probably more of a you want to color the cat how it's actually colored in real life though with like the kittens and the tomcats you get a little more free free willing and fancy free my first husband uh my mother-in-law had Himalayans and they were not I'm sure there are friendly Himalayans out there but man hers were always quite standoffish um, that's probably just how they were how they were raised but they seemed like sassy little princesses um, in my opinion <laughs> They were still beautiful they just why is it always the fluffiest and most beautiful cats for me tend to always be the most standoffish it just seems so unfair so unfair oh i love his eyes this is the main coon love his eyes in that picture Again, this I think this would be fun to play with um, fur colors, fur textures. I think this would be a good book for that. Um, again, probably not if you have heavy pressure with your pencils or you probably want to scan these and print them out, which is probably what I would do. But they do have some examples on how to color them over here kind of looks like Sid the orange and white color in there it's a cat now very cute so yeah the cat coloring book I have a lot of these little um, Dover coloring books uh, these frequently go on sale for like two or three dollars on the Dover site so it's very easy to snap a bunch of these up and and I've done that so this is the cat lovers coloring book by Ruth Soffer um, as always, I'll put the number of pages in the, um, in the description. I'm not sure how many are in here. Other Dover books of interest. The Dover coloring books like these, I suspect might be older books too. I probably should look, you know, I bet that's what it is. 
Let me look at the other one real quick. Yeah, the other one says copyright 1980. So my guess is a lot of these Dover coloring books were what, how they originally published their books. And so that's probably why they are um, in this format. So more text about cats. You want to pause and look? Again, these have captions. These do not have frames, though. They are more freeform, it looks like. But again, very pretty. These look like these are more, um, instead of just the cat, it's the cat in different settings. So and these also talk a little bit about certain breeds. Not as much information as the other book, but just fun little facts. Oh my goodness. That, that name, I can't even pronounce. I don't even think I've seen that one before. Huh. I wonder if that one's in the other books. It didn't look familiar. I do enjoy learning about the different cat breeds. Even though I don't really have a um, specific breed cat, all mine are just are just mutts. But I tell you what, um, if I came across an American curl, those ears would just be freaking adorable. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I've I've loved the idea of an American Curl or a Turkish Van or a Maine Coon, especially um, who I think's personality would fit in perfect. Haha, <laughs> not feeling great, but I just couldn't resist. Um, would probably fit in really well here. Um, I know there are a lot of strays out there that don't end up getting adopted and it's just it's it's hard for me to justify getting a purebred cat like paying for a purebred cat when there are so many stray cats in need of homes it's hard for me to do that but sometimes the purebred cats wind up in the shelters too that's how my parents got uh, Mira she was a rag doll that had, was not in a good living situation, was rescued, and so they adopted her. So that does happen. I see a lot of Siamese that that happens with. So they need homes too sometimes. Sometimes things don't work out for them either. It's just, like I said, it's hard to, I love the idea of a chinchilla Persian. I have not heard of that specific type of Persian. So now I have to go look that up. Because if that sounds as soft, if that's like, if that means the, they are soft as chinchillas, then I'm pretty excited by that. All right. So this is another Dover coloring book series book. I think the rest of them are. So I guess I just shouldn't keep repeating myself. Oh, no, the last one may not be. I don't know what the last one is. I might have gotten out of order. Oh, well, whatever. These are going to be more, next three are going to be more cutesy books. Um, so this is Cute Cats Color by Number. These are 30 pictures. Um, this is definitely geared more a whimsical. I've shown you like the ones where we're doing cat breeds and like, you know, really, I guess, serious pictures of cats. These are a little more... These are a little more fun. This is by Sharon Lane Home. These are also double sided. Um, as you can see, I have done the first page. I think I just did that with budget friendly pencils. So um, this is a color by number and um, it shows you the different colors down here. And um, so yeah, these are cats acting like adults, <laughs> I guess you could say. And you can see here, even with the heavy pressure, it did leave some indents on this. Now, once I color this side, it shouldn't be a big deal, but um, actually I think, did I purchase two of these? I might've purchased two of these so I could use marker. 
I might have because I was really bummed that these were not one. This is a book I wish they would put in the Dover Spark series. That would be great. So these are not complicated color by number. Um, these are very simple ones. These are ones I could do sitting in the living room. The numbers are very easy to read and they're just adorable. I love all cats. Sometimes I'm in the mood for cats doing human stuff. Sometimes I'm in the mood for more serious um, cats being cats. Well, sometimes I'm in the mood for cats being cats funny. And then sometimes I'm in the mood for cats being cats like serious. So we accept all kinds of cats here. Wacky, normal, serious, and so on. As you can see from my stack of books, I, I enjoy a wide variety of cat art, lion art. These are really cute pictures. If I could use markers in here, like, I would have already really went to town on this book. In fact, I'm sitting here and I'm like, these would be really good. I don't think I could finish it by the end of the year. But... I think it would be a good goal, if not this year, next year, to try to finish this book. I think I could do that pretty easily. Oh, he's so cute with his little stuffed cat, y'all. His little puppy dog. That's so cute. Now we have Dumpling Cats by Sarah Slayer. Um, I think it's 30. Yep. It says it gets, we have stickers too. Are they in the front or the back? Mm, they're in the middle, I think. So there we go. Sorry, I'm trying to go a little faster. So again, a little blurb about dumpling cats and what they're doing in the book. These are a little newer, so it does look like they're still using the Dover Coloring Book series, um, but they're just using, I guess, the really simple images like this, they're doing on the double-sided paper. Which I get, but I'm also kind of like, wow, I really would like to have these on single-sided side, paper. Guess I'm gonna have to get more. I'm gonna have to get used to my colored using my colored pencils a little more. Again, really simple but cute images with a little caption on them. I love the ladybug cats. I just think that's it's so cute. And I'm coming across all these Halloween pictures in here too, so. I'm like, hey, what the heck? For a minute there, I was like, whoa, did the book just end? I thought we had 30 images. But no, here are the stickers. So if you want to color the different dumpling cats in here similar to their stickers, you could do that. That would be cute. I don't think the names are included in the stickers, but... I didn't realize there was a series of dumpling cats. I don't know a lot about dumpling cats so I guess I am learning something new today too but again really cute pictures probably ones that I would um I could do in the living room anywhere really Cheeks is like Bagheera in dumpling cat form, I think. I love their little box fort there. That one's cute. I mean, they're all cute. I don't know why I keep saying that. So there is Dumpling Cats. Then we have 
Maneki Neko Lucky Cat, um, which I think I mentioned earlier. We were going to see Lucky Cat again. This is by Arkady Reutman. Hopefully I'm saying that right. That's what the back looks like. We got 30 images. Yeah, these are double-sided pages. I think, like I said, if um, if you like using pencil, I think these are great deals. Or if you like using pencil and you have pretty light pressure with your pencils. I don't know how watercolor would do in here. Or water-based markers. I don't know. I would suspect they will probably bleed through just because of the paper. But I have not tested that. But if you really like using pen just pencils... Um, these are great books to snag. Like I said, when they go on sale for two or three dollars a piece, I think it that is these are going to be a great deal for you. I also still think they're a great deal. Dad, blame it! I knew he was going to do that. Oh, there you can have a few, so I don't feel so guilty. But I have to try to keep Oreo out of. Uh, so it's dry food because it's dry foods typically a little higher in protein so of course he was the one that was frantically scarfing down the dry food you see this this right here like y'all are getting a live <laughs> not a look but a listen a live listen as to what my life's been like this week <laughs> put food down take food up put food down take food up Is this one going to eat? Is that one going to eat? Anyway, you have some patterns in here. Quite a few patterns um, in this one. But what I was saying is, even if you like markers, these are still a good deal, I think. Um, if you have a scanner and you can print, because you could still scan and print them. Heck, if you really want to, you could buy two copies and then you can color, you know, one side with markers and the other side with markers in the other book. Um... This one got folded. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a little bit of a dent or a fold up here in the top area. You know, it would really work out well if I could just put the food next to where Sid's at on the desk right now, but... If I do that, she'll just stomp off, because that would just be too easy. Because then I could really watch it. I don't know a lot about the whole Lucky Cat thing. I just thought this was a really cute book. I see them a lot. Um, one of our favorite sushi places has a really nice collection of them. I enjoy looking at them. It's probably something I could start collecting, but you know, I, I apparently collect cat books and cats I really don't need to be collecting anything else right now <laughs> all right so this is an over coloring book this one's a little different because it actually does have a glued spine to it it's a little different setup I wonder if this is a newer book so again these all are no this is 1988 their Dover books seem to be a little all over the place, so um, I would definitely recommend, I mean, this is why I do the flip throughs, so you guys, you guys can see, but I definitely would recommend flip throughs or looking at reviews and stuff to um, get a better idea of what you've got going on. So this is a more informational type book. It is a little bit older published uh, coloring book, and uh, it shows this is breaking down the wildcats of the world so wildcats of the world by John Green again you have some really beautiful examples of how to color the cats here which I love this is again probably more uh, gonna be like a pencil type of book you do have the really big introduction there alphabetical list of scientific names and then alternate common names so each one has I guess the cat in a setting and then it breaks it has a caption about them so like this is the African golden cat and it looks like the pages are numbered which is super cool 
Oh, some of them are just the cat themselves too, which that's also the Asian golden cat. Whoa, this one's really weird because you got some landscape and some portrait on um, different pages. So yeah, I think these for me would probably be ones where I would likely scan them to color them. Because I feel like it would be really hard to do that in this book. But they are beautiful drawings. Beautiful. Like that bobcat right there, just... Again, if you're more into... If you're more in the wildcats, um, the bigger the bigger kitties and you're more into like coloring realistic cats um, this is I think a good good book for you there are some double page layouts like this one which is nice that Chinese desert cat really looks like a uh, household cat There's a lot of them in here I have not heard of before, like that Chinese desert cat, a fishing cat, and a flat-headed cat. The flat-headed cat is five pounds, eats frogs and fish, extremely rare. Huh. So yeah. Again, if you are kind of a info info nerd like me and you like learning about new species and stuff, I think this is these books are really fun. Cause there are a lot in here I do not recognize. That leopard looks really unhappy about something. And see some of these, like there's a leopard on one side and a leopard on the other. This is a leopard cat. Weight 15 pounds. Lives in the eastern band of Asia from southeastern Siberia to Indonesia. Cool. Oh, so if they have a lot of information about them, I think that's why they do... Um, two, so they can continue talking about them. Boy, the attitude on that cat's face. <laughs> oh, speaking of attitude, my goodness. Some of these, I'm like, they're so cute. And others are, are like, I would not want that one in my house. That thing would eat me if he had the opportunity. Like, I'm good on that. No, I am not. I am not an advocate for keeping, trying to keep wildcats or tame wildcats or anything like that. I'm obviously think they're better in a natural environment and if they can't be released into a natural environment because of reasons then you know a a rescue with similar uh, environment I guess is what I'm trying to say like a rescue would be would be ideal there is one big kitty that I follow that um, is actually owned uh, people actually own him um, I've mentioned it before it's a uh, I am Puma is the YouTube channel uh, It's a Russian couple and the I don't know how they actually came into um, like how they found him but he was born with some genetic abnormalities he really um, he doesn't have a real instinct to hunt or um and there are some other genetic i think issues that he had where he couldn't be released in the wild and he wouldn't do well in any type of rescue environment i guess there with other other pumas so here's another double page spread of some tigers 
So this couple's actually taking care of them, and they, that situation, like I said, there's always exceptions, and like, they take amazing care of that, of that animal, and um, there's no telling where he would be if it wasn't for them, so there are exceptions, things happen, but yeah, no, I think for the most part, <laughs> is that just, it says wild cat, so there's actually... A cat named Wildcat. Yep. So they have an African Wildcat, Egyptian Wildcat. Um, wow, it's pretty cool. I love how they're curious, but she is just like negative. Nope. She isn't going to nope right out of there. There's some more examples back there. So there is Wildcats of the World. Now, finally, we get to the last book. This is a Dover book. I think this is a different series. Yep. It is a to paint or color series and it's called World of Cats. It is also by John Green who um, did the Wildcats of the World book as well. So I think these have been specially printed on light gray lines that virtually disappear when colored. High quality paper print on one side only and suitable for watercolor, color pencils, and other media. Also perforated pages. So um, the difference in these is that the line art is really light so that these, um, they don't show as much when you color the picture. That's kind of the difference in this series. Oh, well, I guess Sedonia is officially tired of my nonsense. She's probably gonna go lay in her daddy's lap. <laughs> She's kind of looking over the food. She's thinking about it. I'm going to put her dry food back down. All right. So world of cats to paint or color. Yeah, she is grudgingly eating, but that's okay. She's eating and that's what's important. So here is, looks like they do have examples on the covers. You see it's kind of more watercolor-y or, or paint. I would say, well, if you're using watercolor pencils, I think these would be ones I might actually take out of the book and like tape down if I were to paint them. Quit trying to cover it up with the paper. My goodness. There is the intro. <sighs> Sorry about that. She is deciding she's going to try to cover up the food with the tissue paper that's next to it. And then she's going to come back around and try to eat more. <sighs> anyway, so as you can see, this is really thin gray lines in this book. So if you are not, if you're a fan of darker line art, this may not be the book for you. I would like to try marker in here just to see how it would do. To me, this basically looks like the setup of a Creative Haven type book layout. It's just the line art is, is thinner. <sighs> finicky, finicky cats. There's the one from the front cover. There's a Christmas one. Yeah, see, I think it'd be really hard to paint those really fine areas right there. That would probably be where, even if I was using watercolor pencils or something, I'd probably want to bring in like a marker or something. So I guess this is more of a realistic cat book where they're playing, like that one's probably about to snatch that butterfly. That one's probably trying to decide which flower it wants to eat. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> She's giving me the same look this cat is giving me right now. I don't know. I don't know what she wants. No, never mind. I know what she wants, and I don't want to feed it to her because I don't want to make her. Yeah, but it's important. See, this is the conundrum I'm in. If she wants to eat, she should be eating her GI diet. But sometimes she obviously does not want to eat it. 
And so then, now she's swiping at me with her paw and trying to kiss up to me. Um, then it becomes, is it more important she eats or is it more important she eats this diet? And I don't know the answer to that. Oh, she's going to come over and say hi, though. Yes. Aw. I guess I better finish this up. She is, she is working me over this morning. But no, I think she wants some of the other crunchies, and they're not really part of her diet. And again, I want her to eat, but I don't know. I don't know if that's hurting her, or I don't know. This is, the, again, y'all are getting like a audio <laughs> experience of what my torments, and now you're licking my arm. Really? I have just a few more pages. I have just a few more pages and then I'll be done. Yeah. And then I'll probably give you some of the, some of the crunchies. <sighs> this last book's going to take like 10 minutes because she's decided. <sighs> she has decided. <laughs> oh, 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 my heart. Like, she was licking and rubbing on me and everything, and I started to pet her, and she stomped off. Isn't that just, isn't that just how this goes? Okay, well, I think we are finally done here, so I need to get this rendering and work on the description. Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, I don't know like I said I might do I really want to do one more color in chat because I want to talk about the last three kitties I have since y'all we haven't really talked about them yet um but it may just be one of the one of the pages from this it's not going to be anything super complicated um it might go out on Monday um Wednesday if if I'm filling up to it, I think I am getting a new release book. Uh, I I am getting the book. I ordered two more books. I'm getting a non-cat related picture uh, or book, a new release um, from Color Questopia. We might flip through that one on Wednesday, and then Friday we'll do the last flip through of this. I would like to do a Halloween color and chat too, but I don't know, guys. We're just going to have to see how the week goes. Because she seems like she's doing well today. But usually right after her steroid shot, she does really well for a couple days. And then by like Monday, she's she's probably going to be difficult again. So, um, yeah. And I don't know how Maggie's going to do. And just anyway, we're going to we're gonna see how this goes. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, sorry I wasn't more more upbeat just you know for obvious reasons it's a little difficult but i am glad um i enjoyed doing this once i got into it so i'm glad i did it hope you guys enjoyed and i will talk to you soon bye for now